This lecture is going to be about Lewis electron dot formulas. And what we've seen a few of these already. But what we're going to look at here is how we obtain a structure. Just to remind you, Lewis electron dot formulas illustrate covalent bonding. as a sharing of electrons. In other words, and, and we're, we're trying to have atoms attain their noble gas configuration. These are the steps we'll use to, um, to construct an electron dot formula. First, will determine the total number of valence electrons in the molecule or ion. Second step We'll write a skeleton structure or a sequence of atoms. I don't know if write is the word. Maybe we'll draw a skeleton structure. So we'll have a sequence of atoms that will, that will be a skeleton structure for us. Then Finally, we'll distribute the electrons to complete octets. We're keeping in mind that we may need multiple bonds. So these are the steps that we'll use to determine or draw a Lewis structure. Here's a few tips that I can give you. And, 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 and the, the, the tips that I'm going to give you are, are there to help you find the best correct Lewis structure there is. You'll see in many cases that there are multiple, multiple Lewis structures or many different ways to be able to structure the atoms or, or, or draw these skeleton structures. And, and to help you get the best structure, I'm going to give you these tips. Now we're going to see that these tips will work about 90% of the time. And we'll also see why they tend to work as we go in the next two lectures also. But for now, here are the tips that you can use to help yourself. First, there's, if there's a heteroatom, put the heteroatom in the middle. So if there's an atom that's different than the other ones, put that one in the middle. Second, typically the least electronegative atom will be at the center too. Typically, the least electronegative atom will be at the center of the molecule. Third, just so you know, halogen, right? Halogens are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Halogen double bonds are rare. If you come up with a Lewis structure and your Lewis structure has a double bond to a halogen, more than likely it's incorrect and it should be reevaluated. There's a better structure that you can draw. Okay. Here's another a final tip. If you're drawing an acid, if the if the molecule you are drawing is an acid, 
the hydrogen will probably be connected to an oxygen. So if you have an acid, the hydrogen will probably be connected to an oxygen. Again, these tips are, are good for about 90% of the time. And we'll see some cases where maybe they're not correct, but, but these will help you get a good structure most of the time. You'll, you will have to know the exceptions, but these, these, these do sometimes help. Let's, let's use these steps and these tips to draw a few molecules And even some easy ones. Let's start with something that's very easy. Let's draw the best and correct Lewis structure for water, H2O, using these steps. Our first job is to determine the total number of valence electrons in the molecule of the ion. There are two hydrogens. Each hydrogen has one valence electron. Right? Oxygen is here. It has one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. So we have one electron from each hydrogen plus six equals eight valence electrons. So eight valence electrons. Next, so we found the total number or val of, of valence electrons in the molecule. Next, our next job is to draw a skeleton structure or a sequence of atoms. This is where the tips start to come in oftentimes, right? Okay, oftentimes if we have a hetero atom, it's going to be in the middle. Ah, we have two atoms that are the same and one that's different. The oxygen is probably going to go in the middle. So there's, we'll draw a skeleton structure. Here's our sequence of atoms that we can use. Next, we're going to want to distribute the electrons to complete octets. So one thing we, we could probably say to distribute the remaining electrons, but, but we may have to make double bonds, so we may have to rearrange some of these too. So let's first look at, think about this structure here. Here we have each bond, these are bonding electrons, right? Each of those has one, has two electrons, so we have one, two, three, four. We have eight valence electrons, five, six, seven, eight. So this structure has the correct number of electrons, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It shows the, the bonds and the uh, correct cells in structure. So this could be a very good Lewis formula for our water molecule. Here's another example. Let's do another example down here. So let's take COF2 as another example where we're going to use these steps and these tips to organize our um, best Lewis structure for this. First step is to find the number of valence electrons. Carbon. One, two, three, four. Four valence electrons for carbon. Oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six six valence electrons for oxygen, fluorine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons for fluorine. So we have 14 total, of course, because of the F2. So that means we have 24 valence electrons. Okay, let's use, so now our next job is to draw the skeleton structure, a sequence of atoms. I see here we have um, um, a, a chlorine, a carbon, an oxygen, two fluorines. Okay, I'm going to use our tips here. We're going to put the least electronegative atom in the center. So using our skeleton structure, this is a plausible skeleton structure multiple or double bonds to halogens are very rare so that would make it so that would probably not have something like this going on okay it's, it's not that it's impossible it's that it's very unlikely 
So multiple or double bonds to halogens are rare, so this is a good place to start. Let's look at this and see what the story is. Well, we need 24 valence electrons total in the molecule. How many electrons do we have represented? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so let's start to put electrons around the rest of the uh, um, atoms in the molecule. So we have six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so what I've done, why did I do what I did? Well, I, I know that we need to have an octet for everything. So that means I need to have eight electrons around every single atom. To do that, the only way to do that is for the fluorines is like that, the oxygen is like that. And we can ask ourselves, is this, is this Lewis structure reasonable? Hmm, well, wait a second. One of our jobs is to complete the octet for every single atom atom in the molecule. Have we done that for carbon? No, carbon only has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons around it. So how can we, how can we, um, how can we make it so that the carbon has a complete octet? Well, we may have to do a double, a multiple bond. Okay, well, I know that halogen double bonds are pretty rare, so let's do this. Let's, let's take two electrons from the oxygen and make them a double bond. So we still have an octet around the oxygen, right? We still have this octet for the oxygen, but carbon now has eight electrons around it. Fluorines have, both have eight. This would be an acceptable or a, a reasonable Lewis structure given what we know so far. Let's look at one more Actually, we'll look at two more examples. Two more examples using Lewis electron dot formulas. Cover up what, we, what we've already seen and do two more additional ones. Okay. What about HCN? There's a molecule with three, three atoms in it. Let's use the, step, the steps. Total number of valence electrons in the molecule. Well, hydrogen, I believe, has one valence electron. Carbon has four. One, two, three, four. Just count over. Nitrogen, one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. So we have one plus four plus five gives us 10 valence electrons we need to account for within this molecule. Okay. Our next job is to draw a skeleton structure. I'm gonna do that skeleton structure. You might be well, so, so I'm going to do this skeleton structure, and let's look and see how many electrons. So we have one, two, three, four electrons total that we've accounted for. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops, uh, excuse me. Nine, ten, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so this would be our structure, skeleton structure. 10 electrons now, this is all, that's all of the electrons that we have to be able to um, do this, all right? The problem is, is that while the carbon has an octet, the nitrogen only has four electrons around it. So we're going to have to start sharing pairs of electrons and making multiple bonds. So if we do that, take two electrons from the carbon, now the carbon has eight electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But the nitrogen still only has six. So let's take two from the carbon again and make a triple bond. Now we have an octet satisfied for the hydrogen. It only needs two electrons. The carbon has six electrons and the nitrogen has I'm oh, sorry, the carbon has eight electrons and the nitrogen has eight. So this would be a reasonable structure 
from what we have so far. Now, you might be asking, how is it that we think, how, why is it that we might put, why is it that we can't do this as a skeleton, as a, as a good skeleton structure? Why is it that the molecule wouldn't be like this? Well, from what we know so far, it's true, this could be a reasonable one. Now, I did give you this rule of thumb, the least electronegative atom is oftentimes in the middle. Out of these, carbon would be the least electronegative possibly the one that could possibly be in the middle. But we'll see how to decide between these. And it turns out this is, this is a less preferred Lewis structure for HCN. But to choose between these two, we'll use something called formal charges, which we'll look at in another lecture in this chapter. But look for that, and then that will help you be able to decide between equally good Lewis structures that we have. Let's do one more Lewis structure. Let's do one more. Let's do ClO minus. Okay, so now we have an ion rather than just a molecule. Nonetheless, all we have to do is follow the steps. Oxygen has six valence electrons, chlorine has seven. So we have seven valence electrons from the chlorine, two times six from the oxygen would be 12. And then don't forget the fact that we have a negative ion, we're gonna add one more electron to that. So we'll see, that, so, so this in total would have 20 valence electrons total that we have to account for. Again, to find the best skeleton structure, we'll go to our tips. That'll oftentimes work, 90% of the time that'll work. There are gonna be exceptions, which you'll have to know, and you'll, you might see, but um, we'll put the heteroatom in the middle, so we'll put the chlorine in the middle. And then we, our job is to distribute the remainder of the electrons until we hit 20. So we have four electrons shown total, and I believe that that makes a total of 20 electrons. Each of the three atoms has an octet, and we're gonna just put that, this in brackets, and draw a little negative at the top to remind ourselves that this is an ion and it has an extra electron. One more, one more tip that I wanna, I, wanna I, I, I didn't give you in writing before, but um, it turns out that, that um, um, odd electron species are, are, are rare. They exist. Okay, so odd electron species are rare, but they exist. So if you happen to be totaling your total number of electrons and you come up with an odd number, recheck your calculation to make sure that, that you've counted the total number of electrons correctly. Odd electron species do happen, however they're rare. Just check your calculation if you do come up with an odd number. Okay, we'll move on. We'll look at some other portions of uh, Lewis-Stott structures in the next lectures.